This is the last upgradable MacBook, and it's not what you think. Typically when I talk about upgradable MacBooks, I'm talking about the Holy Grail, the 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. I've made a ton of videos on those machines over the years, but this is actually a MacBook that I have never owned. This is the 2017 Function Keys MacBook Pro. And frankly, it's not on most people's radar because it's just the base model MacBook Pro from the weird generation. It was pretty controversial. They weren't very popular new. And of course, it has everybody's favorite keyboard, the butterfly. Oh boy, haven't used one of those in a while. Well, hey, look, I guess it works at the very least. That's good. But these Function Keys MacBook Pros are really, really cheap. I paid $179 for this one and at least initially, this seems to be in perfectly good working condition. But of course, the main reason that I bought this particular MacBook Pro without the touch bar is that for whatever reason, Apple decided to give this and only this MacBook an upgradable SSD. Nobody really knew why at the time or still, but that's what they did. So this is the last ever upgradable MacBook. But despite the fact that Apple only offered these upgradable SSDs for the 2016 and 17 refreshes, you can get third party SSD upgrades. So I found this one on Amazon and it is one terabyte. And look at that, it comes with all of the tools that we need, including a flash drive. I've got a little suction cup to help opening the bottom of the case. We've got some screwdrivers and the SSD itself. So. Let's go ahead and get an idea of how easy it is to upgrade this MacBook, how good these third party SSDs are, and we'll go ahead and compare it to a used OEM Apple SSD to see if buying something like this, or in fact, this MacBook in general, is a good idea. So let's get into it right after a word from today's video sponsor. Regardless of which MacBook you have, today's video sponsor, Anchor Prime 27,650 milliamp battery, 250 watt, is the ultimate in portable charging. With dual USB-C and a USB-A port, charge three devices simultaneously with up to 140 watts over a single USB-C PD port. Running out of juice on the go? Charge a 16-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 50% in just 28 minutes with no need to worry about finding an outlet. Plus, Anchor 100-watt charging base can provide a central hub to charge Anchor Prime power bank with 100-watt charging speeds and three additional USB ports to charge devices at your desk. The power bank's compact size along with the charging base makes this the perfect portable set for traveling. Plus, with Anchor Prime USB-C to USB-C cable, you can deliver as much as 200 40 watts over this premium braided cable that provides insane amounts of durability and performance in extreme conditions. To upgrade your charging experience with the Anchor Prime lineup, check out the link in the description below. A big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. So now that we've got macOS set up on our MacBook Pro, now we can go ahead and shut this machine down before we even do anything we're gonna go ahead and upgrade it. Fortunately, these SSD upgrade kits are very, very inexpensive. I paid just $85 to get a one terabyte SSD. And honestly, that made me very curious because while these MacBook Pros don't have a particularly positive reputation, if you can upgrade them for that cheap, I figured it's worth a second look. Okay, I don't like these bottom cases. You kind of have to slide it out. There you go. And there we have, our MacBook Pro with the SSD right over there. Pretty simple process, I guess. We just pull out two of these T5 Torx screws and that should be it. See, now this part would be easier if they had provided a little plastic pick tool, but they didn't, so we just have to kind of brute force it. There we go, okay, that's doable. See you later, 128. Hello, a terabyte. All right, and in goes our Mzucky. I mean, seriously, how do you pronounce that? Mzucky. I don't understand who is naming these companies. Right, well, that was pretty much the easiest thing that I've ever done in my life, but uh, now we get to try to find out what this flash drive that they included in the box is. And I also don't know why they've given me a USB-A flash drive in an SSD kit for MacBooks that only ever had USB-C. Whoa, is this a Mac OS installer? Oh, wait a minute, this isn't an installer, this is just a fully installed copy of macOS. 
oh, wait a minute. No, this isn't booting off the flash drive at all. This is just a blank drive. The SSD just had High Sierra pre-installed on it. And that would actually make sense because this is a 2017 MacBook Pro and it would have come with High Sierra. So no matter what version of Mac OS your, your machine was upgraded to, they will all be able to boot this. Well, certainly a very interesting situation. Let's go ahead and put this thing on the latest supported version of Mac OS and we'll take a look at this SSD. Now, the first thing that I did after installing a fresh copy of macOS Ventura is give this machine a good clean. We have some inventory stickers that left a ton of residue. So giving the machine a full polish lets us really acknowledge that this thing is in good condition. They were never that exciting, but they are very cheap. For less than $200, it is very easy to find these things all day long. But they are cheap for a reason, as running Cinebench showed me very quickly. The 10 minute test took 37 minutes to complete, which yielded a score of 155, which is a fraction of what you would get out of something like an M1 MacBook Air that could be had for less than $500. But even more worrying than its pitifully low score was the amount of battery that running Cinebench for 37 minutes consumed. It almost drained the entire thing. Yeah, as it turns out, this MacBook is only at about 65% of its original battery capacity, which is kind of incredible because it only has 200 something cycles. So I don't know how the battery has managed to die this quickly, but that is definitely a major drawback and it was not something that showed up in the eBay listing. So this computer as a computer, it's on shaky footing, but let's talk now about the SSD. I wanted to get an idea of how an OEM Apple one terabyte SSD would compare against our mmm sucky. Spoiler alert, that name is more accurate than you may think. Now on its face, the mmm sucky's $85 price tag does seem quite tempting compared to the $120 that I paid for an Apple original. However, you have to keep in mind that these Amazon SSDs are kind of just random. Unlike in an older MacBook where you could buy an NVMe SSD and use an adapter, whenever you're buying an SSD that is made specifically for the Apple standard, you should definitely do your digging to make sure it's going to be high quality. So to get to the bottom of this, I ran a bunch of benchmarks on both the Msucky and an Apple original SSD. Starting with the boot times for both SSDs, the Apple original was about three and a bit seconds faster than the Msucky. Not something that you would necessarily notice, but when we open Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, the Msucky at 1600 megabytes per second write is about 400 megabytes per second slower than the Apple original. And it's about 100 megabytes per second slower in the read test. Now this might not seem like a massive difference, especially in the read test, but when it comes time to actually transferring large files, you really do notice that difference. To find out, I copied a 400 gigabyte file from my external SSD onto the desktop. And with the original Apple drive, this took six minutes and 29 seconds. However, the mmm sucky was quite a bit sucky. It took nearly 13 minutes to copy that same file. And that was honestly quite surprising. I was obviously expecting the mmm sucky to be slower because we saw that its write speed is slower than the Apple original, but I didn't think it was gonna be that sucky. Well, as it turns out, when I went to switch the mmm sucky drive back out of the MacBook, uh, a piece fell off of it. Yeah, that's right. When taking the drive out of the MacBook, the heat spreader fell off, revealing the fact that this is, it's hot glued on. What are we doing here? No wonder this thing throttles because the heat spreader isn't a heat spreader. This is just a random little piece of metal that they glued on to make it look like the original Apple SSD. And in fact, we can go ahead and take apart an Apple SSD and you'll notice that the way that these heat spreaders are held on is with these metal tabs and you pry them up and you can see that there's a frame that goes around the SSD. That's what the heat spreader attaches to. And there's also a thermal pad on each NAND module to transmit that heat to the heat spreader. This does none of those things. And so when you transfer a large file, those NAND chips are gonna heat up very quickly and absolutely tank 
the transfer speeds. So yes, it is a one terabyte SSD. It was not a complete fake. And yes, it is $35 less expensive than an Apple original, but you do pay the price pretty significantly. This is something that I think needs to be said across the board, because in a recent video, I tested out another type of SSD for the older style NVMe MacBooks, and that was also slower and lower quality. So I would definitely be careful about using these third-party weird drives for Apple devices. And that applies also to the new M4 stuff as well, the, the new Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, buy from reputable sellers. But speaking of good quality items, let's talk about this MacBook more broadly, because at $190 for the MacBook and $120 for the SSD, we are getting pretty close to Apple Silicon territory. And I know that you're not gonna be able to get an Apple Silicon device with one terabyte of storage for this price point. It's just not gonna happen. But all of the other benefits of Apple Silicon make it a tremendous value. And so once again, we're stuck in a bit of a conundrum in its base price at $190. It is a serviceable MacBook. It has a Retina display, you know, it's thin and light and it has Thunderbolt ports. There's really a lot to like about this at that price point. But thanks to its incredibly slow processor and the relative expense of upgrading it, it's a catch 22. It's cheap and it's upgradable, but if you actually upgrade it, it's not that cheap. And honestly, the fact that mine has a bum battery makes me feel like I ended up on the short end of the stick. It's an old machine that doesn't run current Mac OS. It has a very weak battery, but hey, it's got a terabyte of storage. And I think this really underscores what's so unusual about this period in computing history. It's a time where buying used is strangely not the best value anymore because the Apple Silicon generation of Mac is just so good and so well priced that it, it doesn't even matter really if this machine is good or bad. It, it just has to be really, really cheap to be worth it. But at the end of the day, there is one thing that this MacBook did right, and that's having the upgradable SSD in the first place. Please, please Apple, bring this back. I think, honestly, we're in with a shot. The M4 Mac Mini's upgradable SSD means that we could potentially see something like this in a thin and light MacBook as well. I mean, look how tiny this thing is. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Would you buy or do you already own one of these Function Keys MacBook Pros? And do you think that Apple is actually maybe gonna bring back upgradability? Who's to say? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.